everybody, welcome to Antique Automotive Service. My name's Adam. Today I'm working on Piggy again. Uh, I guess it's been a couple months now since we took this to the BCA National, got the engine compartment all prettied up. I was able to take the passenger side exhaust manifold off because I thought that was where we had an issue with a exhaust leak. But uh, shortly, I guess it was actually the drive out there, um, the leak got much worse and it actually was the driver's side exhaust manifold. It cracked right in half in a really normal spot on these cars. I just did one of these a few weeks ago on a 57 Super. Let me show you what I got. That down there, if you can get a good look at it. Let me see if I can zoom in. That crack is all the way across and around. And all that goobery crap is my rube uh, invention on trying to get it to quiet up while I was at the event. So that didn't work out. It just blew it back out. So what I get to do today is take this off and replace it with another one. Thankfully I already had one in stock. Um, I don't know if this thing has ever been out of the car. Only because it looks like some of these French locks have been flipped up and some haven't. So I don't know. I'm just gonna assume it's never been off, so this is gonna be a hell of a time to get off. I cannot, absolutely cannot break any bolts in this thing today. If I do, then I'm in big trouble. First thing I've gotta do is, eh, get this stupid light out of the way. Let's see if I can get you to, um, these little guys right here, that actually isn't the bolt. There's a, there's a little tab, a metal tab that's bent over off of what we call a French lock and it keeps the bolt from spinning. And that is on every one of these bolts here. So what I've got to do first is take all these tabs and bend them back out, which is kind of a pain in the butt, and then I can get to the bolts to loosen them up. Let's see if I can at least do this somewhat well with one hand so I can show you what I'm looking, or what we're, what we're looking at here. We just need to get under these metal tabs and bend them up. Another one down here. Yeah, trouble. Trouble. Meow, meow, meow. Let me switch hands. <laughs> anyway, that's what I'm trying to do on every one of these things, so it's gonna be fun. I'm going to try uh, using these guys to see if I can bend those out a little bit more now that I've got them off the bolts. For those who don't know, uh, Piggy got a silver award at the BCA Nationals this year, which was kind of a pleasant surprise. Although I think the rain had a little bit to do with it on the, uh, <laughs> I don't know call it cheating, but uh, judging that day wasn't exactly a fun job, so I think some of that stuff might have gotten glazed over. But nonetheless, Piggy got a silver award. Everyone seemed to be very receptive toward the car. I don't know. We'll see how far we get today. Maybe I'll, uh, I've got a few pieces of chrome that need to go on this thing before we take it to uh, the Oktoberfest show on Sunday in St. Charles. Yeah, I wish that AC had stopped blasting. It's loud. All right, here's a moment of truth. I've got four of these bolts ex accessed and exposed. Um, if it feels hard, I'm just gonna bring the torch in and kind of heat them up. But I'm gonna try to reach the easiest one here. That was easy. Uh, I've got, so these four bolts are accessible from the top. And I don't remember if I need to get to all the four of the other bolts from the bottom, but I need to go from the bottom for at least a couple of them. But I've got to jack the car up and put it on stands for that. This is really kind of a pain in the butt because you kind of have to go up and down and up and down and up and down and take the car off the jacks, put the car on jacks, take it back off. 
The manifold's got to come out from the bottom. So that's nice. Ooh. I can't get my ratchet on this one. There we go. Ah, this is just absolutely amazing that it's these bolts are coming out like this. I, I have to imagine that this thing's been apart before. Or maybe not. I don't know. Also, speaking of uh, other cars at shows, um, I don't know if you remember, I did a little video a while back on a 57 Roadmaster that had some transmission problems and I did an engine break in on it. And uh, that car was able to be finished for the BCA National in June this year. And uh, it, that was its first show and it was awarded a Gold Senior Award. So congrats to Mr. Lance Bazorka for that. And I'm a proud, proud restorer of that car. Lance had a lot to do with it though. He did quite a bit himself, but I did all the paint and body and some of the assembly work. I brought it back to him and he kind of finished up some loose ends and had the interior done by a local guy. <clears throat> but that car is an absolute knockout. I'll try to remember to throw a picture of it in on this video so you can get a, a quick look at it. It is just an absolutely gorgeous car. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, we'll get these four bolts out up top here, then we'll take you around the bottom side. Yeah, I don't think, I don't, mm. Hard to tell if that's a factory bolt or not because it looks like it's just a zinc zinc bolt. I can't tell what's on the heads of these things. Hmm. Don't know. Don't care. They're coming out. While I'm thinking about it, <clears throat> um, back about a month ago on August 20th, uh, we went to the Skyview Drive-In in Belleville, Illinois, which is about an hour, hour and a half away from here, depending on how fast you drive. Uh, and it was hosted by V8 Speed and Resto Shop. And uh, they put on a great event. There was uh, two, 200-something cars there. They were all, you know, cool, cool classics and rods and uh, custom trucks and all this other fun stuff. And uh, the host, Kevin Oste, uh, did a little bit of a feature on this car in a uh, in a walkthrough video that he was doing live. He's got that episode or video on his YouTube channel at V8. I think it's V8 Speed or V8 Resto. I'll have to look it up. I'll link it on the on the on the description. Um, he sits with it for about a minute or so and. Uh, tells you about the car but also on he's got a podcast on v8radio.com you can also listen to it on spotify or any other podcast casters and that this car or yeah this car was the subject of a trivia question on that uh, on that on that radio show the next week which is pretty cool gave me a little shout out so thanks kevin for that uh, I've got half of this manifold all off and it just fell off, left the other half on, so it's definitely in two pieces. I guess it's time to get under the car. Let's see if I can get under here. I'm sure you can't see anything. Let's see if I can bring the light over here. Oh yeah, totally can't see anything. I mean, looking, trying to look through the camera lens. I'm about two inches from the, from it. Uh, anyway, so there are the bolts I've got to get to. There's one, two, three, four there. There's the brake, all the way up there. And then I also have to get those bolts off of the collector. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull those off while I'm down here thinking about it. Success.
this is very common in these manifolds. This is just a, a very big kind of archy section that goes into these other two collectors here. Um, and I, I, I can't really explain why, but that's just what happens with them. Uh, this is the second one in about a month that I've done in this exact situation. And probably the fourth or fifth one I've seen firsthand. Hopefully there's enough out in the world that will last, you know, a few more years. You know, one bolt that wants to kill me. Hope I don't break it. Last bolt, literally. I want you to uh, experience this last bolt as well as mine, or as well as me. It is a third bolt in from the back. Um, I'm having a hard time getting a good grip on it. I need to use my right arm to push, but I had a shoulder injury a couple months ago that kind of left me weak. So I really need to pull on it with my left hand this way, but I need to keep my right hand on it to keep the socket on the bolt. Ugh, man. It really seems a little on the tight side. I wonder if I should throw some heat on it. I think I'm going to throw some heat on it. All right, here's the new one. Um, point of order, you probably realize at this point that you couldn't hear me saying anything or or you could just barely hear me because my microphone was not on me. I took it off to run up to go grab my torch and I never put it back on. I think those threads are good. I might run a, run a tap through those real quick just to make sure before I get it on. But this is the challenge of getting this thing in it whole. This one came out easy because it was in two pieces. This literally just dropped out the bottom. This one came out the top. So I'm gonna try to snake this in through the top like that. And if not, I'm gonna see if I can figure out a way to get in from the bottom, but I really think it's gonna have to go in from the top. Well, this sucks. I've got half inch bolts that came out of the old one but these are 7 16 threads, so I need to find a couple of 7 16 bolts to make this work. I really should get uh, studs for this thing, but 
I don't know, bolts were in it already, so it's just as long as you don't over tighten this thing and break ears off, then it's not a big deal. It doesn't need to be crazy tight. Uh, here goes nothing from the top. I really don't think, well, maybe. Get this guy out of the way. It may just slip right in. Hold up. No hold up. Wow, that went right in. There must be something different about the 57 to 58 that uh, makes it harder on a 57 to get this thing in. Let me see if I use French locks on this uh, on this side here. Of course I did. Great. So I'll have to go get some. You go to the parts department, actually. There's my parts department for most of the stuff for this car. I've got taillight bezels, uh, trunk bar, a bunch of spear thingies, and yeah, I don't know, a lot of stuff. All that stuff came out of the car when I went to take it to the show, but I think I've got the French locks in the trunk here. More crap. Let's see. Yep, there we go. That's one. Wait a minute. I need four. Hmm. Maybe we're not getting French locks. Or maybe we're just putting one on. One. That's all I got. Did I... Where, where did the rest of them go? Ooh, there's more parts. What's that? That's heavy. Ooh, engine mount. Manifold gaskets. I'm going to pretend I didn't see that. There we go. All right. We're in business. Okay, everybody, I'm sure some of you have heard about the exhaust manifold gasket uh, dilemma. People say not to use them, and I agree most of the time, but I'm not gonna put myself into a situation where I put this thing together and still have a leak if I can't make sure that these surfaces on the head are as perfect as possible. I can mill that manifold flat but it still doesn't necessarily make up for the issues that might be happening on the head surfaces itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and use these, and they are not symmetrical. There is a one bolt that's lower than the other. And you'll be able to tell when you put the thing down whether it's sitting hot lopsided or not, so you may have to flip it over depending on how it sits. But you can see that these are slotted, so you can stick the, four out, the two outer bolts in on each section. Um, after the manifold goes in, or you know, throw the manifold on with these two bolts on each side, and then you can put these bolts in after you slide this in. That way it's, you don't have to have 17 hands to work on this. Uh, anti seize is essential with these bolts. And unfortunately, you've got to kind of have an extra hand on this to make this happen. Just a little dab of anti seas. You're still going to have it all over your face and body. But I'm just going to put this first bolt in on the very edge. If I can get my hand down there and hold this manifold up. Boy, this shoulder injury has really gotten to me. That's part of the reason why you haven't seen much from me in the last month. Because I just haven't been able to do much. So I'm just going to do this front corner bolt. Just get it started. Uh, and then I'll do the second 
opposite bolt on the next runner. Some of you are screaming right now because I'm not using a towel on my car, but it ain't perfect, it ain't gonna be. This is the third hand situation. Gonna find. There it is. All right, I've got those two bolts started. I can't tell. It looks like the lower bolt is going to go on that second runner. Let me see if that's the way it wants to work. Yeah, that looks right. Let's get these other bolts started and then we'll move to the underside of the car and get those in. I'll probably just do it so you don't have to sit and watch me struggle. Since this gas gets in, you can pretty much, you don't tighten them up, but I'm, I'm cinching them up to very close so it's, it's easier for me to hold the uh, manifold in place with these last bolts on the back side. All right, you get it. Tubbo Towels, not a sponsor, but man, they are awesome. They just wipe off everything, even paint. Now, it's not caustic, it, it smells like oranges, I think, ish, citrusy whatever but these uh i have one in my big shop here and then one up in the uh in the paint and body area gets all this crap off before i go inside and get in trouble and destroy all the towels inside the house cleaning my hands yeah and this you know as long as this thing stays wet it just keeps pulling grease off of whatever you whatever you give to it. Pretty freaking amazing. All right, I got them all, uh, got all the bolts tight. Well, not tight. I've got them all snug, and now I need to tighten them up. So, let's get that done, and then, uh, and then I'll see if there's any extra time for me to put some bling on this car. Okay, all the bolts are tight on the back end and the bottom for the uh, manifold connection at the pipe. And uh, I just need to finish the front four. How the hell did I do this? I didn't mention when I was down there, but uh, the last two bolts in that, in that last... Uh, runner were loose just i mean i didn't even have to try loosening them they just started coming not sure why anyway I typically need three or four different extensions and sockets and ratchets and wrenches and um, stuff like that to do this job. But this one I've pretty much gotten by with uh, just a, a shallow and a deep socket with this uh, articulating headed ratchet. So that's been nice. So far I'm only, heck I think I'm only in about 45 minutes. I guess I'm getting pretty good at this. It definitely isn't my first day. I'm gonna rehash the exhaust manifold gasket thing real quick because I don't know if uh, if that was with my 
microphone malfunction or not. I think I, I don't remember. Anyway, I'm putting manifold gaskets on this because I am not, I don't trust the surface of the head itself. I do trust the manifold because it's flat, but not being able to take the head and clean it and make it perfectly clean, I'm not going to trust metal to metal to make a good seal. I know the factory did it that way and folks are going to tell you to run metal on metal, but I'm, I generally would say yes because that's the way the factory did it, but I'm not going to do that today because I don't trust the head. I think we're ready to start the car to make sure that things are no leaky. Okay, moment of truth. you tell me battery is disconnected try again oh yeah oh man that is music to my ears this car's never sounded so good Success. Okay, the pieces of chrome that I have for this car are these turn signal housings, these boomerangs, this hood piece, this boomerang and this turn signal housing, and then I also have tail light housings, which is not gonna happen today. And then I do have the, a replacement for this. I'm gonna go ahead and swap this out for sure. Um, I think I have one of those too. But that's probably going to be, I'm going to do that one, and I'm, I think I'm going to do the hood bar too. Because it's super easy. These are a bit of a nightmare if, if things are not where they need to be. I don't know if we can tell where, where things are, but you can see how crusty and crappy stuff is back here. I would really much rather not deal with that at this moment, especially considering what we've got happening here. I just don't want to open up Pandora's box and have a massive CF on our hands. So, okay. Hood bar, trunk bar, and medallion. Then I'm done. These look like half-inch bolts. That they are. I need my little quarter inch impact driver, but I'm too lazy to walk up to the other shop and get it. I've got a, a chassis that I'm just finishing up, putting together up there right now. So most of my hand tools are up there. That's the beauty of having a, two shops. You gotta have double the tools or you're switching back and forth between shops with the same set of tools and it's a giant pain in the butt. I never fit this new piece on before I had it chromed and that sometimes can spell trouble. Because these cars are so just, they're different. All, they're all different. And sometimes this piece isn't going to fit the way the leather piece felt, or fit, uh, fit. But that's the chance you take. Sometimes it's an expensive lesson. Sometimes these things warp during the chroming process. So I'm a little nervous about how this is gonna go. <laughs> Just trying to get them all started so I'm not trying to hold the thing up while I'm tightening stuff down. 
thankfully these threads are in good shape. I found the best core that I could with this with these chrome pieces. Any chrome piece that you've got, you want to try to find the best core possible. That way it's not, you know, you're trying to cut keep the cost down on the chroming process. One bolt left. This is such fragile stuff, so even though it's just really big and bulky, it's really just weak, weak stuff. So always hope that you don't just rip the uh, rip the threads out of these things. You just kind of want to snug them down. And don't he-man them on. Yep, see that one's stripped. That's not good. That one is also stripped. Moment of truth. Cool. Doesn't line up too bad. This side's a little high, but there's nothing I can do about it. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> that really makes a difference. You can kind of see a color difference here. This is original chrome. This is not. This is uh, this is probably uh, uh, it's not the old hexavalent. I can't remember what the the new style is. You can see how close it is right here. It's just it's a millimeter of gap. But this is what the uh, the old hood chrome looks like. I mean, it's just an absolute night and day difference. Pretty cool. I can't wait to get the rest of this stuff on. All right, let's head to the trunk. Okay, so we have some mismatched fasteners here. Ooh, top and bottom, two fasteners. I think this has been off before because it's got some, like I said, mismatched fasteners. I got Phillips screws here. I need to get me a little magnetic tray. Here, you can see all the scuzz that's underneath. I, I do believe this trunk is original paint, because I don't see a paint line. Like I did on the front clip. I know the whole front clip's been repainted, and I know like the bottom halves of the doors and this top of this quarter have been painted, so it's like a 50-50 original paint. I did this on a front as well. 
but there was a paint line there and I couldn't really do anything about it. I'm just trying to clean this up so it looks somewhat better. Yeah, there's no, no paint line there, which is cool. It tells me that this is original paint. This is just a like a number one cut buffing compound. Does a quick quick clean up of any garbage that's on the paint. If this paint was any better quality, I'd work a little harder at it, but it's just not it's a driver. All right, now we can put the new piece on. Now this isn't a brand new or any rechrome or anything like that. It's a very early takeoff with the original chrome on it. So it's got a little bit of picking, pitting here, but most of it is like scratches from people's fingernails um, getting into it. And this is gonna be a challenge with one dude. Let's see if I can get this started. I knew getting these started was going to be a big challenge. Let's try to get this other corner piece so I don't have to sit here and hold this thing up. There goes one corner. Damn it. Okay. Well. <laughs> I am prepared for this not. Oh, jeez. This is not going well. Oh. God! Can I get one hole that'll hold a screw? No, I'm losing every every screw that I've got. This is my last hope. Seriously, this is raw deal. Ah, hands free. Or not. That one held. That one held. That one's good. Ooh, I found one. I do need some stick em on these screws to hold them in this screwdriver while I push them in here. That one's good. Okay, got one more. Oh, that one's already in. That one's not. I'll figure something out for these ends. I might have to jam a something in there to tighten the screws up. Cool. All right. There's that. All right. I guess that's it for today. I've got this. Uh, this is a uh, an old takeoff as well. It probably came off the same car as this did. Just kind of kind of hazy scratchy a little bit but there's no pits and uh, this one is kind of in the same situation so uh, that's all I'm gonna do for now on this car but my main goal is to get this uh, exhaust manifold done and uh, man that's gonna look so good when all that chrome is on there all right that's gonna wrap up this car for the day I'm gonna just wipe it off and send it to the show on Sunday and see what we get. I usually don't do well in this show because it's just a beauty contest, but uh, it's fun, it's awesome. It's down on Cobble Street, Main Street in St. Charles. It's a lot of fun, beautiful weather most of the time. So if you're local, it's a good show to go to. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I really appreciate all the subscribers and uh, moving on up. So I'll see you next time.